Have your students drifted away from reading and toward their smartphones during this pandemic? Do you want to help them read more, but just aren't sure how to fit it in with everything else going on? Maybe you've been wishing to create a thriving reading program, but your administration keeps getting in the way. I'm now opening the doors to my free December program, Camp Creative, Ignite Your Choice Reading Program. Over the course of five days, I'll give you everything you need to kick the I hate reading mentality out the door and help your students thrive as readers. You'll get my list of over 50 of the books students love the most, done for you book tasting templates and reading posters, a first chapter Friday program you can roll out immediately, reading accountability options that won't scare your kids away from their books, and even the context and research you need to help parents and administrators recognize the importance of a reading program. Just as in Camp Creative's past, each day's training, packed with resources and tips, will arrive in your inbox, ready for you to explore at your leisure. And this December, we're adding a Camp Creative Facebook group to the mix, so we'll finally have a place to meet up and talk about your plans. I'll be there to answer your questions and gather around the digital campfire with you to celebrate the coming success of your reading program. You'll find the link to sign up in the show notes today over at nowspirecreativity.com. I can't wait to work with you during this free winter session. Building a reading culture in your classroom is a project that never ends, but luckily it's so much fun. There are a lot of ways to keep books in the spotlight, and in today's episode, I'm going to share 10 of them to help you find just a few that feel right to you. You don't have to try all of these to have a successful choice reading program. See what sounds fun, doable, and right for your class. Maybe you'll build one or two of these strategies into your curriculum this year and add one more next year and another the year after that. It's better to start small and build up than start huge and get overwhelmed. The good news is, no matter how you start, you'll be encouraging more reading for joy in your classroom and building connections and relationships with your students. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Hey there, I'm your host, Betsy Potash, and One Pager's project-based learning and choice reading are my jam. I believe in you, and my goal is to help you explore all the creative possibilities you dream of for your classroom. I'm an educator, a chocolate cake aficionado, a traveler who can't wait to get back to Barcelona, and the kind of mom who brings her own mini maker space to her kid's classroom when she comes to volunteer. I know this for sure, creativity isn't always easy. As a creative teacher, you get parent calls you treasure, and plenty of sidelong comments you'd rather forget. But here's the bottom line, creative education can ignite a spark in your students and change their lives forever. You and I know this. You're an innovator, and while it's sometimes hard, it's so worth it. So let's explore the world of creative education together. Welcome to the Spark Creativity Teacher Podcast. Okay, so the very first thing you can do to build a reading culture in your classroom is to have a classroom library. Now, we talked about this in the last episode, so if you haven't heard that episode, go ahead and go back a little bit and play episode 141. Um, before you dive into this episode. It is so important to have books in your classroom and you don't need a big budget and you don't need a ton of space. You just need some books and there are a lot of ways to get started. So do check out that episode. And then kind of in tandem with that, you want to have some time every week for kids to read. And this does not have to be every day. It does not have to be for a really long time. What I used to like to do is set aside about 20 minutes on Fridays. And it was a great time just for for me, most importantly, to see that every kid had a book and that they were connecting with their book. And so here's what I would recommend. This has always worked really well for me. You start off your reading time maybe with a book talk or two, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. And then you maybe point out if you have any new books or if you have a new book display or something like that, and you remind kids that your library is there, and then you give them time to read. And anybody who doesn't have a book comes up to your library and gets one. And then they all start to settle down and they're reading, and you get out your book and you're reading, and it's a great time. But after a couple minutes, you want to sort of covertly look up and look around the room and see who is bored. And this is really important. You're always going to have at least a couple kids who sort of start to glaze over, start looking at the clock. And if, if you see that, then you know that that student has a book they don't like. 
And that is the fantastic time for you to intervene. So what I would always do is just, I would lay my book down, I would stand up, I would just make a little circle of the room, peeking over shoulders, seeing what everybody's reading. If I see that somebody's reading a book I love, I might bend down and be like, oh, isn't that a good one? I love that one. When you're done with that one, you should try this one or whatever. But mostly I don't want to interrupt kids who are really happy. But when I get to the kids who are obviously miserable, I say, hey, you know, it it doesn't look like you're connecting that well with that book. Would you like me to help you pick another one? And they basically always say yes. (laughs) So then you just help them to return the book that they hate and help them to find a book that they love. And that is a super important part of your reading program. You are like the book matchmaker. And that little bit of reading time every week allows you to make the match. Because if kids have 15 minutes in class to realize that they love their book, then they are way, way more likely to read it outside of class. But if they never have those 15 minutes, or if they end up with a book they don't like and you never notice because you don't get a chance to notice, then they are not very likely to read outside of class. All right. Another way to build reading culture in your classroom is to change up book displays now and then. Now, I see a lot of teachers doing a really cool thing where they put their books in their chalkboard tray or their whiteboard tray, and they actually just jot down like one or two sentences about the book on the whiteboard or the chalkboard right above it. Isn't that a quick and easy way to do a book display? I just love that. But you can also just face them covers out across a table or a windowsill or the top of a bookshelf. And there are a million different things you can use for themes, right? You can have banned books. You can have better than the movie books. You can have star books and make it sort of like a coffee theme. You can have, um, you know, different themes that go with months like Native American Heritage Month. Um, There are a million ways to make fun book displays. And what I'm going to recommend is that you check out the Powell's Bookstore Instagram feed. And I've shared some of the photos in the show notes today, but they do an incredible job of changing up their displays all the time. And I love just browsing through their Instagram feed and seeing all of their latest displays because it just gives me so many ideas. And I think you're going to really enjoy that too. All right, and going along with those changing up book displays, you can give book talks. This is so simple that it's easy to overlook, but it's absolutely critical. With book talks, you just go over to your library at the start of reading time or any old day when you have two minutes and you say, oh, you guys, I just finished this book or I just bought this book or I just really want to tell you about this book today because it's so incredible. And you tell them why it's so good and why you think they should read it without giving anything away. <laughs> it's just like a 90 second pitch for the book. And you could say like, oh, if you love this, then you'll like this book. Or if you like this genre, you should definitely check out this book. And those little quick pitches make a huge difference in helping kids to discover the books in your library. If you do a couple book talks every week, um, after a couple of months, your students are going to be introduced to a lot of the most popular books in your library. And gradually, as kids start finding books that they love, you can invite them to do book talks. And if they love it enough, they'll probably actually say yes. And you can give them 90 seconds of mic time in the class. Um, And those recommendations are so powerful when they come from students. So along the same lines, when you have students bring a book back that they love, feature them in a reading poster. Ask them to snap a selfie with the book that they love or snap a quick picture of them yourself with the book that they love and turn it into a poster, either using a PowerPoint template that you make or a Canva template. Just drop in their photo with the book. Ask them for like a one-sentence recommendation for the book that you can put on and then print those posters for your wall. It is so powerful to look at your wall and see 30 books recommended by 30 kids. That will do a lot for your reading culture. Another thing I really like to do is involve guests in promoting books. So maybe this means bringing the librarian in. Maybe it means bringing in the football coach. Maybe it means bringing in the mayor of your city. Anybody can come in to be a guest speaker about books. And what you can have them do is either read a chapter in your first chapter Friday program, 
more on that to come in a second. Or you can have them do a book talk or two book talks. And while they're there, ask them to talk a little bit about the role that reading has played in their lives so kids can see from more people than just their English teacher that reading is significant in all these different ways. And then, again, while they're there, snap their photo with the book that they're presenting and put it up on your wall as a book recommendation poster. That is, again, just going to continue to build a spotlight for reading. Okay, next, you can incorporate games or challenges to do with your reading program. You can have contests or competitions. You can do something like, hey, anybody who reads a sci-fi book over the holiday break is entitled to a gummy spaceship when they get back on Monday. (laughs) Just stop by my office, tell me about the sci-fi book you read, and collect your gummy spaceship or... Anybody who reads a Jason Reynolds book over break can stop by my office for a homemade brownie on the first day back or whatever. You know, just make like a fun challenge. Another way that you can incorporate just sort of a game into your reading program is to do reading bingo. Now, I think this is really fun because you can put things in the squares that will help challenge your readers to get out of their ruts. If you have an epic reader who reads fantasy every time and they want to complete your bingo card for some sort of fun little prize... You know, their fantasy book might work for one square, but then another square might say, read a memoir. And another square might say, read a book recommended by a family member. And another square might say, listen to an audio book. And, you know, they have to sort of change it up and see what else they might like. And I think that can be powerful. All right. You've heard me say this a lot, but another way to build up your book program is to do a first chapter Friday whenever you can. You may feel like you do not have time for first chapter Friday, and I get that, but maybe you have time for first chapter Friday once a month, or maybe you have time for it once every other month. Whenever you have time for it, it is worth doing. It's such an easy way to spotlight great authors and bring more voices into your classroom. So whenever you can, even if it's not on Friday, Open up a book and read the first chapter. It's the ultimate backup plan. Okay, next, use assessment that helps to promote reading. I really love this one. I think this one is really powerful. You do not want the accountability for your reading program to be something that feels like a test or something that feels like a book report or something that feels like you just checking to make sure that kids are reading. That can be really disheartening for your readers and kind of make it a little harder for them to enjoy the program the way you want them to. So I really recommend that you think about how you can make assessment about promoting books and growing the reading culture. So you can make it really clear to them, hey, I want you to create a book poster, not for me, not because I want you to prove that you really did read and you didn't just look at spark notes. I want you to create a reading poster because I'm going to fill our hallway with reading posters because I want the ninth graders to already start getting excited for our reading program next year. Or I want you to create a book recommendation video because we are going to start putting them on the school website so that incoming students can get ideas for what they can read over the summer. Or I want you to do a book pitch for two minutes because everybody needs new book ideas for second quarter. And after they listen to the book pitches, then they can find three or four books that they want to read. Stuff like that. If you can make that assessment into something that matters to a real audience of readers I think you make it a lot more powerful for the kids you make it seem less annoying (laughs) and you also use it as a tool to improve the reading culture in your classroom okay last but not least make a book recommendations a legacy so at the end of the year give your readers a chance to leave behind a legacy of reading for the next class if you have 11th graders you know as they graduate up to become seniors have them leave behind personalized bookmarks that say like you know Betsy Potash recommends and then my top five reads from that year with little pictures of the books and little quotes from me about why they're good and say, you know, you're going to have those out for the incoming 11th graders so they can look and see like which seniors they look up to, what they read as 11th graders and how um, they might want to choose books that are curated by those leaders at the school. Or maybe you want to have them make 
book recommendation posters or leave behind book trailer videos that you're going to watch in like a, a reading film festival in the first three days of school. Or maybe, and I did this once and it was really fun, you want to have a, a reading festival that you're Um, older kids host and they actually invite the younger kids to come. Maybe you have it at lunch or you have it before school or after school and you have snacks and you have music and you have reading projects and you have books spilling out everywhere on every table and the older kids are talking to the younger kids about the books. Again, that's just a really cool way to amp up your program and help your outgoing readers to influence your incoming readers in really positive ways. Okay, that's a wrap. Let's go back through them really quick. We are starting with host a classroom library. That is like the foundation. All these other things will work so much better if you have a classroom library. Make some time to read. Check in with your readers. Make sure they have books that they like. Use changing book displays. Even if you only spend five minutes once a month changing things up, it really makes a difference. It makes your readers notice your library again. Give book talks and invite others to give book talks. Feature students in your posters. Help their recommendations to be in the spotlight. Involve guests. Bring in other adults that your kids recommend to show that not only English teachers read. (laughs) Incorporate games or challenges like reading bingo cards or break challenges. Do First Chapter Friday whenever you can, even if it's We Read Wednesday or Meet a Book Monday. Use assessment that helps promote reading and doesn't just feel like a check-in and make book recommendations a legacy. So there you have it. 10 ways to promote a culture of reading in your classroom. Before I go, here's the scoop from Slovakia. The lockdown is finally partially lifted here, and we recently had the biggest blizzard Bratislava has seen in five years. It really made for a magical couple of days. We built snowmen and a snow alligator. I went hiking through these fairy tale woods on the mountains by my kids' school, and we even got to go tobogganing one night in the mist after dark on Kaliba Mountain at the edge of the city. We were really lucky also to be able to tuck our way into a booster shot for me and vaccine shots for the kids in Vienna because Slovakia can't give them to us yet. So we're feeling a little more comfortable in the world again, although the cases here are still pretty high. In a few days, we'll be off to see Prague, Budapest, and Barcelona for the holidays as everyone here has three weeks off. Whoa! I'll be sharing all about our adventures on Instagram if you'd like to come and join us on our travels. Okay, thanks for joining me today. I hope you're feeling full of ideas for developing a culture of reading in your classroom. And I hope you're planning to join me for Camp Creative. I'm so excited to share book tasting templates, a complete First Chapter Friday program, dozens of top book recommendations, and much more during this free professional development camp delivered straight to your inbox. I'll be putting the link to sign up in the show notes, so hurry and register. We're getting started December 27th. Until next time, take care of yourself and stay creative.